長期投資で勝つための秘訣は何かと問われればその答えは投資先企業をしっかりと理解するということにつきます株を買うとはその会社のオーナーになるということです大切な自己資金を企業家に預けてその事業によって資産が増えることを期待するものでありその結果は保証されていません大切な資金を守るための手段は投資先の企業を理解すること以外は何もないわけですその責任は 100% 投資家にあると言えますそれが投資の本質だと考えています会社を理解する上で非常に重要なのがその会社の設立の背景や遠隔を知ることです人間に例えて言えばその人の生い立ちを理解することによってその人がどんな人間でどんなことを重要視するのかを把握しようとするのと同じことです特に成長過程にある会社ではその生い立ちが事業運営のあり方に大きく影響します創業者や CEO はどんな人間なのか何をやってきた人でどんな価値観を持っているのかそれによって企業の進む方向が違ってきますではパランティアテクノロジーズは誰によってどんな理由で設立されたのでしょうかまずは創業者のコメントを聞いてみたいと思いますまた以前にもパランティアテクノロジーズに関する動画を出しています概要欄にリンクを貼っておきますのでぜひこちらも参考に見てください Well, this was,、uh, this was another company I started uh, in, uh, in 2004.、Uh, it was、um, sort of the big, pic- the big picture of PayPal was sort of to revolutionize money and, and payments. The big picture for p a l a n c h a i n s sort of like in the wake of 9 11, a few years after that, was、um, could one do something from a libertarian or civil liberties point of view that would still be you know, tough on terrorism? And, uh, and, and things like this. And,、um, and the, the, sort of, uh, the sort of sense I had was that, uh, that uh, the way we were going with just you know, ridiculous airport security checks and、uh, you know, super intrusive、uh, surveillance all the time you know, wasn't really making us safer. Yeah,、and、so this was sort of your answer to the Patriot Act in a way. In a way, this was sort of, you know, it was like I, you, know, you had the ridiculous lines at airports, you'd been you know, through. All, all, all the ways that,、uh, you know, the response, to,、um, and,、uh, and, it was, and there was a question was there some way, was there some technological fix? And, you know, one of the ways I often think of technology is、um, that it's a way to do more with less. And,、um, and so, you know, you can,、um, you, can get, um, you, know, you can get more energy for less money. That's like an energy innovation,、mm-hmm. or cleaner energy for, you know, less pollution.、Um, More energy that pollutes less. That would be like a technolo- technology innovation in clean energy. And in the security space, the doing more with less is something like,、um, is something like more security with less intrusion on people's civil liberties. Now, that's kind of, a, that's kind of the, the trade off that you want. And that、uh, the non technological debate that we had in the US in 2004, in many ways that we still have in 2018, is,、um, is always. Uh, it's always you do more with more versus less with less. <laughs>、right. And so you can have the,、um, the neocon、um, Cheney version, let's say, would be that we're going to have,、um, you know, we're gonna have、um, you know, more security with more civil liberties violations. And then you can sort of say that the、um, equally Luddite ACLU would say something like we're going to have fewer.、Um, um, You know, civil liberties violations, and we're going to have less security. Right. And,、um, and that's kind of the, that's the, the way the ideological debate gets framed.、Mm-hmm. Now, I, I'm sympathetic to the ACLU on civil liberties,、uh-huh. but I think they will always lose that debate because、uh, the way you preserve civil liberties is not to have terrorist attacks. Because when you get a terrorist attack, you get the Patriot Act. And,、uh, you know, if, if the World Trade Center would erode civil liberties as much as it did in 2001, I didn't even want to think what would happen if you had another terrorist attack. And so、yeah. you have to prevent it to,、uh, to, stop, uh, to stop more erosion. What Palantir does is,、uh, is、um, it, 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 it sort of is a way for,、um, for, uh, for um, you know, patterns and data to be、um, visualized through a combination of computers and human analysts. And,、um, and, then, um, and then, in a way that doesn't simply Scour the planet and get all the information about everybody. So it's just 
If there's something suspicious, then you look some more. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's sort of a, there's a natural predicate you build before you investigate people. And in, in that sense, it's, it's way less intrusive. ペイパル創業の経験をもっと広く活用し911の同時多発テロのような悲惨なテロを防止するためにもテクノロジーを生かしたいという思いがあったわけですでは具体的にはどのようなコンセプトがありそしてどのような苦労があったのでしょうか、uh, uh, autobiographical anecdote in my book when I was a teenager in my 20s and the advice I'd give my younger self I was incredibly、um, driven by these sort of competitive dynamics. My eighth grade junior high school yearbook, one of my friends said, I know you're going to make it into Stanford in, in four years. And I, sure enough, I got into Stanford four years later,、uh, then went to Stanford Law School,、uh, and then ended up at a big law firm on, on, on Wall Street.、Uh, it was one of those places where, from the outside, everybody was trying to get in. On the inside, everybody was trying to get out. <laughs> when,、um, when, when, I, when I left after seven months and three days, Um, one, one, of the, one of the people down the hall from me、uh, told me it was reassuring to see me leave. He had no idea it was possible to escape from Alcatraz.、Um, and of course, all, all you had to do was go out the front door. But, but it, was, it was psychologically hard for people to do this because、um, their identity was so wrapped up in the competitions they had won, the people they had beaten along the way, that they could not even imagine doing、uh, anything different. And, and so I think this is, and this is why I think competition is always this very two-edged thing.、Uh, when you compete ferociously, you will get better at that which you're competing on, but you will always narrow your focus to beating the people around you, and,、uh, and it often comes at this very high price of、uh, losing sight of what is、uh, more important or perhaps more valuable. Um, early days of Palantir, going in into these meetings with you know, the CIA and, and big government organizations. Were you in these meetings or did you send, you mentioned? Yeah, no, it was Stefan and me and then Carp. And then we both, the three of us kind of ran stuff for the first few years on the business side as well. I, I was head of product, but then I shifted over to head of business and I, I replaced myself with someone who's way better than me. But yeah, the first few years I was doing a lot of these. And, It's, it's, it's,、uh, I mean, it's really, really hard dealing with big institutions. There's all sorts of tricks of the trade. This is another reason why you need probably people who have done it before or who, who understand these things. But I mean, big institution, it turns out like one thing that didn't, was not intuitive to like the 21 year old version of me is it really matters like how you're introduced and, and who they think you are. So it's like one thing I think I, I thought, like, gosh, I have this thing that they need and I'm going to walk in the door and show them. And shouldn't the world just work where if they need it and it's helpful to them, they're going to they're gonna listen? And it turns out that's not at all how the world works. It turns out that if I'm introduced by like the former head of the CIA who, who, in, in the right way, then it's, and, and who's like, looked at it, they got to be way more seriously than if I'm introduced by like the older brother of a friend who used to work, you know, who works there or whatever, right? So, so it's, like, it's like there's all these subtle status things about how you come across. There's all these subtle things about how you. About, about how you present the company, you present yourself. Like, government people, and I think this is true of like, most big institutional people, there's a dialectic there where they, one, they really want to be feeling like they're on the cutting edge, but then they also really want to feel like it's safe and like it's proven and like someone else has done this already. So, when we ended up closing our first pilots, like, CARP figured out a way to like, make the FBI think the CIA was already moving ahead and make the CIA think the FBI is already moving ahead, and they both felt like, more safe and they were jealous the other guy was going first, and they, and they both did it, you know? Wow. So it's like, it's like there's all these, like, it's really stupid because there's like, there's like the actual substance of the business, which does matter, but then there's also all these subtle things about how human institutions work that are very, they're just people are complicated beings. They're not always logical, right? What was the customer discovery process there like? You guys knew that there was a problem with, with data in these organizations, or as you started talking to them, you started you know, pivoting what, whatever software you were building. What was the first software you built? How was that? Yeah, and I wouldn't recommend building companies like this normally. I think, I think with Adapar, it was a lot more logical where we had early customers using it and iterating with us. With Palantir, you couldn't really get early customers using it, so you had to go just talk to them and you had to see what their objections would be, see what they wanted, see what the requirements were. So, what we did, I think there's one of the early years when we started doing this, there was a period of about 12 months. Where I had 26 round trip flights on JetBlue to DC. That was, that was before JetBlue had business class, by the way. So it's like, it's like we were back and forth, back and forth economy. And,、uh, and we would just every two weeks, every week and a half, we'd go out and we'd show them like, the latest we'd done and we'd get their feedback and we'd talk about it and we'd see what they wanted, what they cared about. And, we, and, and then we'd go back and we'd just like, iterate and code and build as fast as we could and, and, create, and create something that was based on what they said. 
and to try to make them feel like they had ownership over it, make them feel like they're part of the process, and then impress them with how quickly we're building. And then, and then eventually, after iterating a bunch with all these different people, we got to the point where, where they didn't really have objections and they were, they were willing to try it out. Peter Thiel's statement was that the conflict was too strong, and it became too strong for the people to be able to get into it. That's why the conflict was more important than 価値のあるものを見失ってしまうリスクがあると主張していますそのリスクを避ける意味もあり全く新しいサービスを始めたわけですが今まで存在しなかった市場を開拓して作り出すというのは並大抵のことではなかったことがわかりますではその後パランティアを通してナショナルセキュリティ国家安全保障に関わってきたピーター・ティールはどのような問題意識を持っていたのでしょうかフランティアテクノロジーズの取締役を務めるピーター・ティールの発言からその存在意義を探ってみます。The U.S. share of global R&D investment, 1967, as you can see right here,、uh, it was a little over 60 percent. A big chunk of that was DoD related. Obviously, the USSR also made up a, a significant size of the global total. And as you see it move through the next several decades and over the next 50 years. You get to 2017, and the U.S. is less than 30 percent of global R&D spending. And look at what's happened with China. It's completely, it's jumped, and it's become a larger share of the global total than the USSR was during the Cold War. How much is the need for new innovation, new technologies, the way you're thinking about funding companies、um, and starting companies right now? How much is that being driven by the China discussion? Well, I think the uh, China um, dynamic has changed things tremendously in the last、uh, few years. Where,、um, where you know, in the '90s and maybe still in the 2000s,、um, um, we thought the Cold War was over, and、um, there was sort of a there was sort of a,、um, a a way we could proceed on、um, um, where it could be slower. You could you could go with the, the bigger the bigger primes, things like this. I think、uh, you know, I think、uh, China is going to force us. To compete, to think much harder how we can deploy technologies much faster,、um, and uh, and, uh, and and so I, I think yeah I think it's just it's it's changed the dynamic、uh, tremendously. I, mean, have, I think we have a serious space race with China. We have、um, you know we have a serious AI race.、Uh, you know I, I've I've,、uh, I've I've complained in the past about、uh, Google's、um, you know what, what I think very problematic decision to pull out on the project Maven, the AI project with the U.S. military. And、uh, to continue to work with China,、uh, which I think is sort of a shocking, unprecedented thing for a major American company not to work with the U.S. but indirectly to work with our、uh, geopolitical rivals,、uh, military. But、uh, I think sort of the, the silver lining of the Maven controversy is that it、uh, it tells us that AI is a military technology, or at least it's a dual-use technology, and、um, it's not something that、uh, Silicon Valley had acknowledged for a long time. For you know. And I think it's sort of very different. When you think about the debate we had about nuclear weapons in the in the 1940s, where it was clear it was dual use, and you had a debate, and there were scientists like Oppenheimer who were against, and Teller were in favor, and you had sort of a debate. And we haven't had this debate. And I think,、uh, I think,、um, even though I disagree with Google on Project Maven, and、uh, I think it has forced a debate. And、uh, and that that sort of debate about AI is going to happen in many other areas of technology. They are dual use, and、uh, you know it's. We, we better make sure、um, we get the cutting edge ones on on our side. Yeah. So 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 fundamentally, Palantir is information systems. So we're taking what used to be a very services oriented market, where people would spend billions of dollars on information systems, and we're productizing the space and、uh, helping secure civil liberties by tracking how all the information is used and helping them use it better.、Um, do you think we'll ever have a cyber 9/11, and how imminent is the threat? Well, I think there's a lot of really smart people at the NSA and otherwise who are constantly working to make sure we don't.、Um, I think in Israel as well. Uh, Israel is probably the center of the startup scene for cybersecurity right now, and it's it is a huge problem. I mean, China is clearly sponsoring tens of thousands of young people to hack into things we're doing here in America. It's part of their one part of their army's policy, and it's very scary. And, it, and it's 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 clear there's just like cyber like battle going on in the background, and it's something that. You know, I, unfortunately, probably people from the NSA aren't as excited to be in TechCrunch and, and talk about it. But but it is something that's really important. That it's really good that we're spending a lot of money to try to try to make sure there isn't a cyber 9/11. 
Well, it, uh, it was just in the form of a set of questions I asked, where, you know, um, artificial intelligence is something people talk about nonstop in Silicon Valley, uh, but they almost never talk about its dual use. If, if it's real, if this is a real thing, it obviously can also be used by the military. It'll be weaponized in all sorts of ways, and it's an important national security question as to who has it. There's uh, this very peculiar background where Google is working with, uh, with the Chinese um, communist uh, government and not with the U.S. military. So the Project Maven decision was a decision not to work with AI with, with the U.S. military, but they're working with the communist Chinese. And so the question is, you know, from the outside is just what in the world is, is going on there? And I, I sort of suggested a few different possibilities, but I think, uh, you know, it's been they, they've described it as a Manhattan Project for AI. And so if you go around broadcasting that you're building the Manhattan Project for AI, I, I would think this naturally would draw the attention of foreign intelligence agencies. Um, you know, it, I, I think the Chinese are competent enough that the Ministry of State Security um, is likely to have infiltrated Google. And, uh, and then I think the Google management has sort of a decision of either letting the software go out the front door or figuring it'll get stolen anyway and go out the back door. And then I think, of course, there's probably, you know, a broad base of Google employees that are, you know, ideologically super left-wing, sort of woke, and, and think that uh, China is uh, better than the U.S or that the U.S. is worse than China. It's always, it's always more, it's more anti-American than anything. これまで見てきた通り、パランティアは他のテック企業とは大きく違うということが理解できたのではないでしょうか。民間企業は政治的な発言を避けて中立を装っているのが一般的だと言えます。しかし、政治献金のあり方を見ると、どちらに傾倒しているのかは一目瞭然です。これを見ると、シリコンバレーが圧倒的な割合でリベラル系であり、民主党に傾倒していることがわかりますその一方でパランティア創業者のピーター・ティールはトランプ元大統領の友人であり熱烈なサポーターでもありますまた CEO のアレックス・カープも同様に愛国主義が徹底しており米国政府と仕事をすることに誇りを持っていると発言していますそして改めてパランティア・テクノロジーズのミッションは何かということを明確に述べています Nobody would suggest that Donald Trump is a humble man. But the big things he's right about amount to a much needed dose of humility in our politics. Very unusually for a presidential candidate, he has questioned the core concept of American exceptionalism. He doesn't think the force of optimism alone can change reality without hard work. Just as much as it's about making America great, Trump's agenda is about making America a normal country. A normal country doesn't have a half trillion dollar trade deficit. A normal country doesn't fight five simultaneous undeclared wars. In a normal country, the government actually does its job. And today it's important to recognize that the government has a job to do. What Trump represents isn't crazy, And it's not going away. He points toward a new Republican Party beyond the dogmas of Reaganism. He points even beyond the remaking of one party to a new American politics that overcomes denial, rejects bubble thinking, and reckons with reality. When the distracting spectacles of this election season are forgotten and the history of our time is written, the only important question will be whether or not. That new politics came too late. Three years. Because Silicon Valley has obviously failed in its mission to produce technology that's useful and that the, useful for the world and makes it a better place. And we were, I think, the first reasonably large company to leave. And now I'm very happy to come back and say, look, you know, on occasion, you know, our position is a position we're proud of and be surrounded again by people who disagree with me. これまで見てきたことで。パランティアテクノロジーズがどのような会社なのか理解できたのではないでしょうか会社の生い立ちやポリシーが一般的な企業とは一線を画す存在だということがわかるでしょうこの大きな違いが他の投資先と比べてプラスに働くのかそれともマイナスなのかどのような分析をするかは人によって意見の分かれるところだと思いますパランティアについて皆さんのご意見ご感想をお待ちしています最後までご視聴いただきありがとうございました。